Hi, my name is Grace and I'm a Makerspace Mentor at the Grace Lake Public Library. First off, I'd like to say thank you very much for your participation in this Take and Make program. And on this video, I am going to show you how to assemble and decorate our Grace Lake Library birdhouse. Now, when I was designing uh, this program, I wanted to create something that would remind you guys of uh, the Grays Lake Library. So I, I decided it would be kind of fun to uh, create a birdhouse that looked like the front entranceway of our library. Um, and one of the ways that I'm gonna show you how to decorate this birdhouse is to, to paint it to look like uh, the library itself. And there are stencils that are included in your take and make kit. Um, one of the other ways uh, that I'm going to show you how to decorate this birdhouse is utilizing some of the other craft items in your kit, like the uh, scrapbook paper and stickers and ribbons. And the third way, or the last way I'm going to show you how to decorate this birdhouse is using items that you have found items that you have at your home, like maybe little figurines, um, you know, wrapping paper, newspaper, etc. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the program and let's get started. When you open up your birdhouse take and make kit, you are going to find one pre-cut wooden birdhouse, um, only one. Um, you get to decide which of the decorative techniques I'm going to show you you are going to use. If you decide to decorate the, the birdhouse so it looks like uh, the front of the library, uh, there's a picture of the library as well as uh, pre-cut stencils to use to paint the birdhouse. Um, if you're going to go with uh, the second technique, there are a couple sheets of scrapbook paper as well as some stickers and ribbons and any odds and ends that we end up tossing in there. You're also going to need something um, to paint on. Um, a drop cloth. This is an old shower curtain, or you can, you know, use the uh, the backing that comes in the envelope to to paint on top of. Um, you're gonna use. You're gonna need some a variety of paints. I just had some of these folk art paints in the house. Um, you know, you can use any kind of water based paint, acrylic paint. Um, you will need brushes for the paint, and for if you're gonna do the stenciling. For the um, birdhouse technique where you make it look like the Grays Lake Public Library, you're going to need to use a either a stencil brush or a foam brush. Um, these you, I got these at the dollar store. A, I think it was a buck for this and then a buck for a pack of three. So you're going to need one of those uh, to do the stencils. You could use a regular paintbrush. The problem with that uh, regular paintbrush is that sometimes... Um, the paint will seep underneath the stencil, and I'll get into that a little bit when we get when I um, describe how to, to stencil it, uh, the uh, bricks. You're going to need um, other brushes too for the varnish, marker, pencil, an exacto, scissors, some sort of cutting um, surface, whether it's a cutting board or back of a cardboard, um, varnish. I, I have a water-based one or, you know, a, a spray varnish to um, protect the surface of uh, the painted um, birdhouse. Some glue, Mod Podge for the second and third technique, and some masking tape. So let's get started on the uh, using the stencils to paint the birdhouse to look at the Grizzly Public Library. Okay, welcome back. After you've gathered all your supplies and unpacked all the pieces in your take and make kit the first way i'm going to show you how to decorate this birdhouse is to make it look like the front of the grizzly public library um, this is also where the stencils will come into play um, the first thing you need to do is to paint the outside sides of the birdhouse the mortar color so as i said before i'm going to put the uh, i'm going to put the roof in the base away. As I said before, use whatever paints you might have in the house. You know, it could be, I happen to have these folk art paints. Um, you could use, you know, old house paint or any other craft paint that you happen, happen to have in the house. Um, I went ahead already and mixed 
uh, the paints for the brick color and for the mortar color. I happen to have a couple of, of uh, baby jars, uh, or you could use any other container. You don't even have to use a container. You can mix it on a paper plate. Okay, the next step is to tape the sides of the birdhouse down to the drop cloth in the proper order uh, that the sides are gonna be assembled on. Um, this is important, especially when, come, when it comes time to use the stencil for the brick pattern. That way, when we paint the brick pattern or stencil on the brick pattern, it'll be continuous, the brick pattern will be continuous all the way around the birdhouse. Um, one, also, there's another thing I wanted to tell you is that the inside, you can tell the inside of the panel the insides of the panels are singed, and that's from the way they're cut on the laser. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down using some double, you know, some masking tape that I just turned over. Okay, let's see. Let's see. See, here's the, the wrong side or the inside. Okay. Then just take your mortar color and uh, put on a layer of paint. After you get one coat down, let it dry uh, for a couple hours at least. And if you want, you can put on another coat of paint. Now that the mortar color has dried on the birdhouse sides, we're going to use the stencil to create the bricks. But first, my suggestion would be is to practice uh, the stencil stenciling on a piece of paper because stenciling is a little bit different than just painting. Here, you can see this example. You you want to only have a small bit of paint on it because what happens when you get too much paint is that it'll bleed underneath the stencil. Let me show you. So in order to, to practice your stenciling, use one of your, use either a sponge or a stencil brush, which I got from the dollar store. And this is where the paper plate comes in handy. So you're gonna take a little bit of your stencil paint and dab it on the paper plate. So you just get a little bit of paint on the brush. See what I'm missing? And then basically stenciling, is, they call it pouncing. And it's a, it's a small, or it's, a, it's, a, it's up and down light movement on the stencil. And then you can pick up some more paint from your paper plate. This is way you don't get too much paint um, leaching underneath the stencil because that uh, easy. So practice um, your stenciling before you actually put the stencil on the piece. Okay. Okay. Once you feel comfortable with your stenciling technique, go ahead and peel off the stencil, wash it off, and then dry it off carefully. Now on the front stencil, you can see the areas that have been blocked off in the stencil that should line up with your the, the front two windows. So go ahead and line that up and then tape the edges down. I would suggest taping the stencil off onto the uh, drop cloth. Don't tape it to the paint because you might run the risk, risk of um, pulling the painted areas up. Of course, I should have left you guys a little more room on the side of the stencil. What you could also do is, you know, paint a piece of paper to the sides, you know, to make sure you aren't blocked off, just to protect the, um, 
already the other painted sides. And then get your stencil brush, put some paint on the plate, dab on the plate until you just get a little bit of paint on the brush. Hold on the stencil. Now you're gonna wanna, you will see that the stencil overlaps the um, join of the sides to the front Go ahead on the, on the front stencil and stencil um, these bricks that go over the, um, the lines, the, the joints. The reason being, that's how we're gonna line up the other stencil, the side stencil, um, to the front. So you get this continuous pattern of um, bricks across your entire um, birdhouse. After you've stenciled the entire front, you're gonna have to let this dry, you know, maybe an hour, half hour, uh, how, you know, whatever your paint says to take, it takes to dry. And then, then you're gonna um, move on to the sides. Once the front stencil has dried, carefully peel off the masks and the stencil. There you go. So you're going to notice there's a couple of bloopers over here where it did seep in, but you could probably go back in with a thinner uh, brush and the mortar paint and touch that up. Or you can leave it, you know, it, it kind of looks a little bit authentic when it's all um, bloopy like, or a little bit bloopy like that. Now I'm going to take the side stencil and for both sides, I'm going to want, you know, you can see how the bricks extended over to the sides. So then what I'm going to do now is line up the, the side stencil with these bricks. That way you'll have this kind of continuous um, uh, flow of bricks all the way around. So take this down. As well as put our paper masks back on to the side so we don't get excess paint and we don't want it to be and then you can proceed to stencil this side brick the same way you did with the front um, using your paper plate to dab out the um, paint so you don't get that much on the, on the brush and then once this side dries You'll do the exact same thing. You're gonna peel off the paper, pull off the stencil, and then move it over to the other side and, and, and repeat the stencil.
The next step in this uh, uh, replica Grays Lake Public Library birdhouse is actually an optional step. Um, if you take a look at the photo of the front facade of the library, you'll notice that uh, it has these dark or lines that go across the whole front. And that's actually uh, uh, an architectural detail where the brick is recessed. So you're getting a shadow, a cast shadow of the, these rolls of bricks. And I wanted to make my birdhouse look just like the library. And if you want to do that, you know, follow this next step. I tried masking off a row of bricks and using a darker paint or a trans, you know, parent wash with dark paint. And that didn't seem to work because the paint was seeping underneath the um, masking tape. So I think the best bet is to use a dark gray or, a, you know, a black Sharpie marker to make these roll lines. Um, I would suggest using an older Sharpie marker, not a brand fresh new one, because then the marks might be too dark and stark. Um, if you look at your print, there's a you can you can still sort of see the mortar in the shadows, but you know, it's up to you. Um, also, you'll notice that there's two lines for the top at the top uh, window, and then there's the rest. There's four of them on the bottom of the windows, uh, the bottom opening. And um, I am going to put this rule line right at the top of the window, right at the mortar line, and the same for the, at the bottom. And then for the, the, the four rules that go on the bottom opening, I'm going to start here at the top of the arch in the mortar line, and then gonna, I'm going to count four bricks down and then do the same going down. So as I said, I'm going to use a, don't use a fresh marker. Use one that's had a little bit of use so the, therefore the lines won't be so terribly dark. And I'm going to use my ruler to line up across the bricks. And draw. A ruler line to the arch. You know, stop at the arch because the line doesn't go through the arch. Yeah, so, and then, you know, move your ruler and your marker up a little bit or down a little bit to completely fill in that motor line. And then just move on down to um, draw the rest of the lines on the facade. Obviously, I have to adjust a little because my um, stencils aren't perfectly square. We are now going to finish up with some of the small details. Um, grab that front stencil again, and you're going to notice that there's a small square and a long rectangle in the center of it that's called the top detail, and another rectangle that's for the light. And so what we're going to do is center this little top detail on the blank space at the top of the front panel. You know, line up that square with um, the bottom row, the third row, of, the bottom of the third row of bricks, and then center it in that vertical space. Tape it down. 
And then I, where's my stencil brush? Okay, I just took a little bit of the darker paint, the, the brick paint actually, and I'm gonna put some of this, um, some, some darker, the burnt umber paint that I had that didn't work for the uh, lines. And then I'm just going to carefully you know, stencil just the top part of this rectangle. And, uh, you know, if it's not dark enough, obviously, because this is supposed to have the same, uh, it's supposed to, it's, as you can see in the picture, it's a slightly darker, uh, in, you know, architectural detail with a little darker brick. So just, just a slightly darker paint than the um, uh, actual bricks. And then I had already mixed some teal paint. I used uh, two of the folk art paints that I have. I used a primary of this Wedgwood Blue and I added some of this green thicket to it just to make it kind of a bluish teal, which you can see uh, is this these little small square um, details, on architectural details. And I, the roof is actually this color too. So I mixed enough paint for the roof, which I have right here, the roof pieces, two roof pieces. Um, you know, make sure you check to see what's right side. Remember the, the uh, bird marks are on the inside. And then you, um, it doesn't really matter right now, but you're eventually going to assemble this with the uh, uh, holes in the center. But I'm gonna actually tape these back down to the, um, drop cloth too, that way they don't move around when I paint them. So I'm just going to take a small, tiny brush and just paint the inside of this little tiny square at the top. You know, carefully paint it. Or what she could do, which I think, or what she could also do if you wanted to. Um, well, actually, here, I'm just going to try painting this small square because what she could do just, the, you know, following the guidelines. Yeah, unfortunately painting might get a little bit of seepage underneath the uh, stencil. So what I think I'm gonna do for the lights is actually take a pencil and trace in pencil uh, the areas uh, where I'm gonna paint for the lights and just, you know, freehand paint it. But go ahead and take your blue paint or the teal paint and and um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint the roofs. Now, I'm going to leave the bottom unpainted and you don't, you know, obviously you can paint it if you want to, you know, go back to paint it with the brick color. Um, but I, you know, I wanted the, to leave the logo out um, and I'll varnish this when I varnish the rest of this. After the paint is dried on this little top detail, go ahead and take the stencil off and then locate. Then as I said before, I'm going to suggest you use that little light stencil and just trace out uh, the rectangle on the areas where you wanna freehand paint the lights. So if you look at the uh, picture of the library, you can see the lights are like, uh, uh, on either side of the openings, uh, just a little bit underneath the, you know, centered between the, uh, a couple of the black rolls. So let's see, it's my white. And these are just, we're just tracing um, the stencil to give us themselves some guides to where to paint, use, uh, using the white paint to make the, to paint the lights in. Okay. Let's see our 
already have some white paint on my plate. Get myself a lead teeny tiny brush. Do with my and then go ahead and paint in the lights. Right now is a good time to do any touch up you might want on your bricks. Like I could actually see in my little uh, um, teal square accent that some of the paint did seep out of the uh, underneath the stencil. So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. But any other little uh, parts of the motor or brick that you'd like to touch up uh, before we varnish this. Okay, now that all the painting is done and everything is dry, you can either varnish it now or seal it. You need to seal it eventually. You can either um, seal it with a, something like this crystal clear or some polyurethane. You could either um, do this now before we assemble it or you can um, uh, coat it and, and, and polyurethane after. It's up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my crystal clear and seal it and then I'll, when we come back, we are going to glue this together. Okay. Now that all my birdhouse pieces have been coated and dried, I am going to show you how to glue this together. Um, I am using just some regular old Elmer's glue. Uh, you could use uh, some regular wood glue or even some epoxy. I wouldn't suggest using super glue or, or hot glue because it's going to dry too fast and you're going to need a little time to work um, the pieces square and so everything sit, sit, uh, sits properly. Sometimes the the joins will be a little bit tight, so you have to um, mess around with it a little bit. Um, I've I'm going to use a paintbrush with the glue because it'll give you a little bit more precise, precise application. Also, you might want to have a damp sponge on hand to wipe off any extra glue. I, I also had um, painted already the little wooden perch, and I just only painted it up to the last uh, half inch, quarter inch, because the uh, paint actually is thick, it's thick enough that it makes it a little hard to get in here. So when you paint the perch, or if you do, you could, what you could do is you could, you know, um, sand out the, the hole on the, um, on the um, birdhouse front in order to get the little uh, bird perch in there right. So. I'm going to put that in last and I'm going to start with just gluing the sides and keep in mind remember the way you had it um, laid out when you were painting it so that your rule lines will line up.
and here we are. The Finnish Grays Lake Public Library Birdhouse. I actually put another coat of varnish on this after it was dry just to protect it a little bit more. And the last step that we have to do is to put a string through the roof to hang up the birdhouse. You know, whether it's purely for decorative on your shelf or whether you're gonna hang it out in your garden. And I took a, a little piece of wire that I'm gonna bend the back end of and put the string through. And it just occurred to me that I could have probably put the string through when I, when I was in the process of gluing it, but oh well. So then I'm gonna make a kind of a hook shape on the other end of the piece of wire and fish that through the uh, two holes in the roof. And hopefully this is gonna pull the thread up over to the other side. Maybe tie it off. And there you go, the finished birdhouse. The next method I'm going to show you of how you could decorate your birdhouse is using the um, scrapbook paper that we included in your kit, as well as some of the other decorative um, items that we've included. I'm going to actually use a couple of these, actually use, uh, make the walls of my birdhouse one of the colors, I think this teal, and then I'm going to uh, use this pink for the front and the back. Basically what we're doing is wallpapering papering the outside of the birdhouse. Uh, we're going to use Maj Paj to adhere the paper to the sides of the birdhouse and then you also use it on the outside to seal it in. Um, usually you use de uh, Maj Paj and decoupage which is um, similar to this uh, but it, in decoupage you basically cut out images and pictures and um, adhere them to painted surfaces but collage decoupage that's what Maj Paj is used mostly for so the first thing we're gonna do is like I said I want pink for the front and the back and so we're just going to See, I want it oriented this way because I like the um, pattern this way. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to take the two pieces that I'm going to be uh, papering in the uh, pink and I'm going to roughly trace out the panel on the back of the paper. You don't need to trace out the windows. You're going to glue the panel to the cut paper and then after it's dry, you will come back and cut out the windows and the panel edges. After you trace it out, you're going to use an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors to cut the paper a little bit bigger than what you had traced. So after you cut the paper, glue the panel to it and then coat it with the Maj Paj. Then you are going to go ahead and do the same steps for the rest of the sides that you're going to paper. After all the birdhouse pieces have dried, go ahead and trim off the extra paper on each piece. So grab your cutting board again, as well as an X-Acto blade, and trim the extra paper off by following the edge of each wooden piece.
Now that I have trimmed all my birdhouse pieces, I'm going to glue it together again like I did the uh, painted birdhouse. Only this time I think I'm going to actually, um, as I'm gluing this in, I'm going to actually string the, uh, put the, put the string through the holes so I don't have to fish it with that little hook. But anyway, yeah, I'm using brush again. I'm going to put some, the regular glue all, a sponge to wipe off extra glue. And actually this time, I forgot to tell you last time, I use um, some some painting tape to hold the sides together um, while the birdhouse dries. Now that the uh, birdhouse is dry, I'm going to add the uh, last finishing touches. Um, I think I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to actually try to use in this ribbon um, to hang the birdhouse. I mean, this is a purely decorative one. I don't think I'm going to have this one go outside. Um, then I'm going to add some, some of the, uh, use some of the other materials that we're going to get, like maybe some of these stickers. And I use some of my, uh, the rest of my, um, scrap of paper to make these paper roses um, to decorate the birdhouse. Um, you can find the tutorial on how to make these paper roses. I uh, highly put together a tutorial and it's either in our um, playlist on um, YouTube or on um, Facebook. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get started. Again, the last 
The last technique I want to show you on decorating your birdhouse is using um, supplies that you will have at home. Um, I'm actually going to use a already uh, pre-made or pre-glued birdhouse that I had made when I was testing the sizes. This is actually a little bit bigger than the ones that you guys are getting. But I wanted to use a collage to decorate this um, uh, birdhouse. I, I, I have some, oh, some wrapping paper here, um, some tissue that I'm gonna use. I have an old uh, copy of the Kill Knocking Bird that had some pages already missing in it that I'm going to actually tear up and use to collage the sides of the birdhouse with maybe some um, 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 decoupage using some of these uh, flowers in the tissue. Um, I actually took some pictures of some books that I had and sized it so um, I'm gonna uh, trim it to fit the top of the birdhouse to make a roof for my birdhouse. Um, I have some old, old school papers and newspapers and tax forms and then another printout of a bird that I'm gonna try to um, use with the Maj Paj um, to create some sort of library themed kind of collage for this particular birdhouse. Also, the last thing I have is this adorable um, clay owl that my daughter made for me, which I will sit on top of the birdhouse, glue on top of the birdhouse when it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create and with yours collage you, you know see what you got around the house and see what can you throw together anyway let's get started Use your little bit of wire again to make that hook and sort of thread the uh, end of it with the uh, twine to go through the two holes in the top of the roof. And then I'm going to look at those other stickers and adornments that I got in my kit and see if there's anything else that I could possibly use. 
to finish off this collage bird house. The last detail I'd like to add to this uh, collage bird house, um, I have some scrap bits of twine and I think I'm gonna edge the openings with uh, uh, this little brown twine. Um, I'm gonna use hot glue because it's gonna set fairly quickly. Um, or, But if you don't have hot glue, you can certainly use white glue. You just might have to hold it a little bit until it dries enough to set. So anyway, here we go. And there you are, three different ways to decorate the Grays Lake Library Birdhouse. I want to say thank you for your participation in this program, and I hope you enjoy your birdhouse.